Dr. Cholia, what about, uh, you know, this idea of uh, e-bricks that uh, he talked about? You know, it's uh, interesting. I mean, it also goes, it looks like, uh, like I mean, first of all, bricks sounds quite interesting. Then e-bricks is, is also quite interesting. And Egypt, uh, would you think it, it has the affinities that these other countries also have? I think it's a bit of a stretch right now uh, hmm. because Egypt is in um, economic uh, model. Um, I think they barely have... 15, 20 billion dollars to cover their uh, next month's imports and so on right now, and they're heavily aid dependent on the West. But I think eventually, yeah, I mean, Egypt has the potential, the territorial size as well as the population uh, to be able to grow. Uh, it was growing under Mubarak, although it was a lopsided growth. So if they return to that growth, eventually you could think about it. Although I must say that even when South Africa was included, people said, you know, it's a minor economy compared to the BRIC. Right. So S itself was a bit of a, uh, you know, a gamble, but it was good for geographical representation. But now that we already have one uh, from Africa, it might be, you know, some time before eBRICS uh, is realized. But I think in principle, uh, there's no objection to the idea that Egypt is a potential emerging economy sure. and a potential major economy that can contribute to this uh, multipolarity. In fact, uh, one of the other political dimensions related to this eBRICS phenomenon is President Morsi's desire not to place all the eggs in the American basket. Remember, his first state visit was to China okay. after taking power, and now he's coming to India, and his advisors have... So there is this whole right. um, emphasis on moving away sure. from a unipolar world, re-emphasizing NAM and all these things, and that's where historically yeah. Nasser and Nehru. So we go back a long way, and I think we will continue in that trend. Uh, you know this business about a hub for Africa, for nor North Africa to start with, and then the whole of Africa. Uh, it seems to be huge. I mean, carrying huge potential. But uh, what about the political stability in the region? Well, you know, Sudan is also stabilizing gradually. So I think uh, that region, the, the Maghreb, uh, as you know, of course, has been going through some tumult. But um, what is interesting, Morsi was dangling a figure like $200 billion could be the trade for India through the Suez uh, Corridor, uh, which would connect uh, and reduce transportation costs and all that for our exports uh, to Europe and to, uh, and to Africa. So I think he's definitely a smart uh, seller of big ideas, and that okay. uh, is evident from um, the way in which he's framing these opportunities for India. And I think the trade uh, should shoot up, or it should go further. Uh, it is important that uh, India is supposed to be the sixth or seventh largest uh, trading partner for Egypt, which is just barely recovering from the uh, post-revolutionary uh, uh, drops True. in economic figures. Uh, the other thing I would mention is the small and medium enterprises, the agreement, right. it's very critical for Egypt because you know employment generation comes through these industries and not through huge financial sector and all those uh, right. you know, wasteful uh, fine kinds of investments. So I think they are looking there for the Indian model to try and rev up uh, gen employment because it's so critical to maintain the uh, uh, peace Absolutely. because of the unrest in the society. True. Dr. Cholia, they were quite fascinated by, uh, you know, our uh, electronic voting machines uh, and some of these institutions of democracy that we have. Uh, also, of course, I mean, the very fact that uh, democracy is so vibrant in our country. Uh, how important is this, you know, in terms of uh, building institutions or sharing best practices that can help build uh, Egypt's de democratic institutions? Yeah, as, as some Haddad was just mentioning, uh, there's so much India can give and the Prime Minister has also offered um, to share, uh, you know, democracy itself is the, you know, bedrock for nation building in these kind of societies. They have minority problems, they have, um, uh, you know, border issues with Israel. So, you know, there, so there's a huge uh, onus on them to create a kind of a, um, a co-option mechanism with lots of formal and informal institutions that can balance out different interests in a way that leads to a peaceful solution. That's where India comes in. I've been arguing that we need to bring Gandhi to Tahrir Square long right. uh, ago. Right. And since then, uh, our civil society institutions, our ways of managing multi-ethnic problems, our ability to try and coax different sections into coexisting. This is where India right. can really, and I'm glad that Navdeep Suri is the current ambassador. He was working public diplomacy earlier uh, here in the right. Ministry of External Affairs, and he has the kind of um, sure. enterprise to right. push for these additional measures, because India traditionally sure. does not do these things. We are only focused on trade and investment, but it's good okay. to move into the political institution building that will stabilize Egypt in the long run. Right, and uh, I think we've run short of time. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us here on Late Edition.